The earliest, most memorable experience that I have in an existing building was back in 2010 when I went to Scotland for my first Karate World Championships. It was the first time I decided to believe in myself that I could do greater things than I thought. I was at the Edinburgh Castle taking a tour with my teammates during the day before we would return in the evening for the opening ceremonies, which were epic. There were so many things that fascinated me about this place, but to put it in simple terms, I could feel the character of the building through the stories that its aged materials told. It didn't feel run down and moldy, which is what you might associate with heritage buildings. It was lively, exciting, and it gave me a glimpse of the Scottish culture and history. Little did I know back then that it would also become a key player in the fight against climate change. My guidance counselor in high school would not have been able to tell me that I would be studying how to make cool existing buildings better for the environment. So we keep amazing existing buildings like these, but what about the ordinary existing buildings? We are more accustomed to demolishing the ordinary existing buildings because we think they're of less value. But this is accelerating the demise of our environment. The amount of construction waste produced every year from demolition is insurmountable. In 2017, 500 millions of tons of construction waste was generated in the United States. This is millions of tons from one country, and it totaled more than twice the amount of the regular city waste. If we reuse old buildings and their materials until they're no longer of use, then we will have reduced the construction industry's waste drastically. Globally, buildings emit about 40% of annual greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than all of transportation combined. You might think that the solution would be to build new net zero energy buildings, but ponder this. 60% of the built environment that exists today will still be present in 2050. However, just keeping existing buildings is not enough. We need to reduce the carbon emissions from existing buildings by 81% by 2030 and 100% by 2050 in order to prevent critical warming above 1.5 degrees Celsius. Imagine that we could keep the history in existing buildings and the carbon to make it better for the environment and people. We can do this through deep energy retrofits. What is a deep energy retrofit? It's the combination of changes that we can make to a building in order to cut its energy, energy use by at least half. These changes can be made to the walls, windows, roofs, the building systems, which includes the water heater and what heats, ventilates, and conditions the building spaces. And we also need to look at the energy source. Can we produce and store on-site renewable energy like solar, wind, and hydro to provide some or all of the building's energy use? When we reduce the energy use, we are reducing the amount of carbon emissions linked to its energy source. How do we do this in a strategic and systematic way? We need to first understand the building through different tools to assess the current condition of the building. Then we create an energy model that represents the building's interactions with its environment. Using this baseline energy model, we can iterate combinations of changes, what we call retrofits, and then select the best retrofits to maximize the energy savings while also respecting key character defining elements of the building. I did exactly this during my thesis for my master's where I studied a heritage house in Ottawa, Canada to determine how much energy could be saved through respectful retrofits. What do I mean by respectful retrofits? I mean I won't change the entire aesthetic of the building removing all the things that you love about your house. We keep these elements of the building to maintain the beauty and value of the house. So for my thesis research, I had the opportunity to work with a passionate person, Angela, who cared about reducing the energy-related carbon emissions from her house. She felt a personal obligation to do more in the fight against climate change because of her privilege living in a place like Canada. She said that the wealthy have had the largest impact on climate change, while generally more vulnerable groups 
that experience other daily challenges like poverty feel the worst consequences of climate change. So when given the opportunity to get a free energy analysis done on her house, she enthusiastically said yes. She was eager to let me enter her house to play doctor and research what changes could be made to make it better for the environment, her utility bills, and in keeping the heritage character of the house. The bonus was that I was getting hands-on experience in the industry that I wanted to work in. As a student, people will throw you a bone like this because most people pity broke students. Usually, a homeowner may not seek these professional ser services due to cost or availability. So this was a win-win-win situ situation. The third win being for the environment and heritage. So first, in my process of my thesis research, I talked to Angela because being the owner, she has a lot of knowledge on her house. Angela had already started improving her house, so it was performing better than the average house. To gain a better understanding of the behavior of the house, I measured the heat transfer through the walls and roof. I took thermal imaging of the house to see the heat movement through the house and identify problem areas. Then I went to my computer and essentially played a video game of creati creating an energy model to make it as realistic as possible to the existing house so that we can predict how much energy will be saved with each energy savings option. Once I did some analysis, then I checked in with Angela to see which options she would prefer based on things like cost and practicality. At my work, we like to keep things fun for everyone at this stage, so we conduct it kind of like a game show. We split the room into two teams and ask them to choose their best options in three different categories. One, the most carbon emissions saved. Two, the best value for the price. And three, a combination of both. So from my analysis, we learned that Angela could save 71% of her annual energy. And this was 71% savings on a house that was already performing better than most. How did we do this? by increasing the insulation levels, upgrading the building systems, adding sensors and controls to reduce the electricity use, adding storm windows to the historic windows, air tightening the building enclosure, and adding solar photovoltaic panels. All this could be done while conserving the main heritage elements of the exterior red brick facade and other elements of its Dutch colonial and Queen Anne revival architectural styles the beautiful historic radi radiators, and the interior wood molding. These are the things that Angela loves about her house, and we were able to keep them. She loves being part of her neighborhood that's enriched by the character of the old houses. So with the knowledge of how to get to 71% energy savings, she is starting to implement the retrofits, but it's happening gradually over the next few years because of the capital that it requires. These are some of the challenges that homeowners are facing in the practical process of getting the retrofits that they need. The price point is still not there where it needs to be to make it accessible to most homeowners, and there's not enough policy or practical, uh, readily available information surrounding this topic in Ontario to support homeowners. This means that there's still a large gap in practicality for homeowners that want to save money, energy, and the values of their house through environmentally positive changes to their houses. We need to improve policy and services for homeowners to make the changes that are required to meet 2030 and 2050 climate change targets. Angela is a community leader who's talking to the municipality about these issues and how we can solve them. Each of us can do what we can in the fight against climate change to make a difference. We all love our ordinary existing buildings, even though we don't live in magical historic castles. So let's flip the switch on the climate crisis by conserving our ordinary existing buildings, improving their sustainability, while also maintaining their character to ensure that our future will be bright.